This tutorial is going to demonstrate a technique for adding texture uh, in the early stages of your Photoshop rendering. So in this case I've got uh, my basic AutoCAD line work uh, in here in multiple layers. I've also got several layers of color in here and, and the trees have uh, a drop shadow blending option attached to them. Now what I want to do next is start to add some depth and some texture to this by creating overlay layers. I'm going to start by creating an overlay layer for the grass and sort of paint in uh, some texture uh, over this grass. I'll do that by starting with a grass layer, creating a new layer, renaming it grass overlay. Now on this overlay layer I'm going to actually uh, grab a brush that's uh, embedded in Photoshop and I'm going to sort of paint around the edge of this just to darken up the edge and give it a little bit of texture uh, in this grass area. And you can use this same technique for a lot of different uh, areas across the site but we'll just start with the grass layer itself. Now I want to find a specific brush that is a legacy brush that's inside of Photoshop. I'm going to go to Window and Brushes, and I'm also going to verify that I'm on my brush tool over here. If you click and hold, you can make sure that you're on the brush tool and not any of these other ones. And it's easy to confuse with some of the other tools that look like brushes, like the History Brush. So make sure that you hit B to go to the brush tool. Now in my brushes, I've gone to Window and Brushes to open up this panel right here. I'm going to click in this top right icon and go to Legacy Brushes, and we're going to add these into our brushes uh, that are presets inside of Photoshop. Now inside the legacy brushes I'm going to go down uh, to the wet media brushes which are down towards the bottom because they're alphabetical. I'm going to find uh, the drippy water brush right here. This is a brush that I like to use. It's got sort of a loose watercolor texture to it. We'll close this and what I'm going to do is actually sample this green color right here and uh, as I start to paint around the edge of this uh, I want it to stay within the confines of the grass. So to do that, I'm going to control and click, or a command click on my Mac, control click if you're on a PC, on the grass layer icon. You can see how the hand changes, and as I click here, it puts a marquee around it. I'm going to use my brackets to change the size of my brush, and uh, I'll just start kind of painting. Now because I sampled the same color that was in here, it's not going to show up until I multiply this layer right here. And so now I can kind of see uh, how I'm darkening up this edge. So I'm just going to kind of quickly move around uh, the edge of this. You might be a little careful, but uh, frankly being a little loose isn't uh, the worst idea here. Now do this for all areas uh, of the site where you've got some grass and just remember to be a little loose. You kind of want to uh, completely cover the edge, but uh, you don't want to get too uh, consistent or rhythmic with it. And when there's trees that are out in the lawn, I like to kind of spill over. Make sure you click every now and again so you get these uh, small splatters with this. And you can use the drippy water brush. You can use really any brush in here, uh, just something that's got a little randomness to it. And what this does is it takes uh, an otherwise uh, you know, perfectly consistent rendering, uh, and it kind of loosens it up a little bit. Now, first thing you'll notice is probably too strong on here, uh, not just probably it is. So I'm going to grab the opacity and sort of slide it back here, just so I can get a little bit of texture. You might do multiple overlays. You might combine this with the blending option pattern overlay to get some texture for these areas, and you probably do it for different areas uh, of the site, like these shrubs and maybe the aggregate and even the concrete. Uh, sometimes I'll change up brushes, maybe for vegetation I'll use this drippy water brush and for a concrete or hardscape, use something that's got a little rougher texture just to differentiate hardscape from landscape. Now another thing you might consider doing an overlay layer on uh, are the trees themselves. So I'm going to uh, deselect my selection right here by doing Command D. I'm going to come to my tree uh, color layer, create a new layer and call it uh, tree color overlay. I'll then uh, grab this color and sample a different one uh, that's more in line with my greens. And uh, in this case, I'm going to kind of zoom in to this layer and uh, shrink my brush and start to just paint in a little bit on the bottom side. Again, I need to multiply this to have it show up. And it's probably going to be too strong initially. So I'm going to put it in for this first tree and then uh, dial back the opacity a little bit often helps to zoom out as you do this. Now what's different in this case is I'm actually not control clicking the tree color layer. I could and it would kind of confine my brush to just uh, the circles for the trees themselves, but in this case I kind of like the fact that it colors a little bit outside of the lines. 
Uh, one of the reasons for this technique of sort of uh, hand drawing in stuff when, yeah, you probably could bevel and emboss or use inner shadow uh, as an overlay or as a blending option on the grass is it just gives it a, a looseness that, uh, that you uh, otherwise wouldn't have if you were automating all of this using some of the tools. Uh, in Photoshop. So it's always good to have a few techniques where you are kind of hand drawing those components and uh, in this case even coloring a little bit outside of the lines to make it feel uh, a little less rigid um, than if you were to do the entire thing in Photoshop. So we'll zoom back out. You can see if I were to continue this over the entirety of the, uh, the project you'd start to get that, that darker area. And again play with the opacity uh, see if you want to do it a little heavier, a little lighter. And I would say in general when using this technique, uh, subtlety is key. Uh, so I hope this helps give you guys some ideas for how you might uh, start to add some depth and some texture to your Photoshop renderings while still getting that, that hand-drawn feel.